Ready? Good afternoon and welcome to Subcommittee on Planning Dispositions and Concessions. I'm Councilman Chaim Deitch and I will be uh, filling in today for Chair Kalos, who cannot be here today. Uh, we are joined uh, with Council Member Rich, uh, Donovan Richard, and uh, today we will uh, today we'll be also holding hearings on many projects. If you're here to testify on any item on the calendar, please fill out a white speaker slip with the, the sergeants in arms and um, indicate the LU number or project name of the item you wish to, you wish to testify on on that slip. Uh, we will begin with LU 155, the not conduit the mapping for property located at 219-01-219-25 uh, North Conduit Avenue in Councilmember Richards District in Queens. This application is to demap a portion of city-owned street and to sell it to the adjacent property owner to use as parking area for commercial business. Uh, I now open the public hearing to LU 155. Uh, and we have people to testify, so I would ask the council to swear in the applicant. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. Okay. All right, we will be as brief as possible. Uh, I'm Mark Weperin from Greenberg Trowig. I'm joined by Dan Eggers, who is our zoning attorney at Greenberg Trowig. Uh, this is, as we mentioned, a demapping in Council Member Richards District, right near where Donovan Richards III goes to preschool. I'd like to call on Mr. Eggers now to go through the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Weprin. Councilman Deutsch, Councilman Richards, good afternoon. Dan Eggers, land use attorney at Greenberg Traurig. I'm representing 21925 LLC, the owner of 21901 to 21925 North Conduit Avenue. It's located on the east side of Springfield Boulevard near the Belt Parkway in Queens Community District 13. This is the Conduit Plaza Shopping Center, which my client developed in 2013. The buildings are on the property that my client owns. Most of the accessory parking area, however, is a mapped but unbuilt portion of North Conduit Avenue that my client has been licensing through the Department of Citywide Administrative Services since 2012. Since the license is temporary, in order for my client to be able to provide parking on a permanent basis, we've applied to demap and have the parking area disposed to my client. The parking area is 15,357 square feet. At the request of DOT, we're also seeking to demap an approximately 3,300 square foot portion to the east of the property, so the total area proposed to be demapped is 18,656 square feet. Here is the application map showing the proposed change to the city map. The area to be mapped is outlined. As mentioned, the area to be mapped is currently used for permitted accessory parking, which is as of right, and if demapped, it'll continue to be used for parking. No development is proposed. This area now has 42 parking spaces. There are an additional eight parking spaces on the site, so there's a total of 50 parking spaces currently. As a condition for the demapping and sale to our client, DOT has requested certain improvements to the parking area, which are shown here on this illustrative diagram. These primarily involve changes in curb cut location and configuration, and the addition of landscaping around the parking area. With these changes, the total number of spaces would reduce from 50 to 47. In sum, this application would allow the area to continue to be used for parking permanently with improved curb cuts and landscaping. I ask for your favorable consideration and welcome any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, two questions. So obviously I, I had concerns with the uh, triangular uh, part of the lot. Well, I guess the whole lot is triangular. Uh, but the uh, portion of 144th Avenue that wouldn't be a part of this application. Can you speak to uh, any conversations you may have had with DOT or may not have had? And uh, how could we be helpful in that conversation? And then obviously uh, tree planting was something the neighborhood brought up. Um, so you can just speak a little bit on the record of uh, what we plan to do there. Yes, yeah, so I'll be happy to, to speak about that, Councilman. So this, this area has been included in the demapping application at the request of DOT. We've, um, we've reached out to the law department in the course of beginning to draft the mapping agreement that would actually provide for the disposition of the area. 
and we were advised that DOT at this point has no plans for the disposition of the area, but we would welcome any um, assistance your office could provide so that we could have a productive conversation with DOT, because after all, our, it's in our client's interest to make sure that that area is, is maintained and, and has an attractive appearance since his property is adjacent to it. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, that we would welcome. And as for the planting of street trees along uh, the Springfield Boulevard and 144th Avenue frontages of the property, we would also welcome the opportunity to uh, potentially partner with Springfield Gardens High School to provide students an opportunity to plant street trees and then be responsible for maintaining them, either street trees or some other sort of vegetation along those, uh, those frontages. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you for your work on this. Thank you. And thank you for acknowledging my son's uh, daycare, which is not too far from there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Are there any members he of the public perhaps help you? To? He could perhaps help you uh, plant some of the trees. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, any members of the public wish to testify? Okay. So seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on this application, and it will be laid over. Thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, continue with the public hearing on the LU 159, the 490 East 181st Street application for property located in Councilmember Torres' district in the Bronx. HPD seeks approval of a new Article 11 tax exemption for a period of 40 years, pursuant to Section 577 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The subject property is an exi existing 24-unit residential cooperative building for low-income households with 23 occupied and one vacant unit. The prior tax exemption would be terminated. I now open the public hearing on this application and, uh, okay, and ask the council to administer the oath uh, to these applications, to these applicants. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in answer to all subcommittee, uh, all member questions? Yeah. Yes. We have a lot on the agenda today. <laughs> Take your time. It's raining outside. We have nowhere to go. <laughs> Do you want to read it? Or you want to read it? Oh, yeah, sure. Afternoon, Chair. My name is Artie Pearson, Director of Land Use from uh, HPD. Land use number 159 consists of an exemption area containing one privately owned building located at 490 East 181st Street in the Bronx Council District 15. This property is a candidate for round 10 of the third party transfer program uh, in rim foreclosure action number 53 for which HPD is seeking Article 11 tax benefits. 490 East 181st Street was taken into city ownership in 1978 and subsequently entered into the tenant interim lease program. On June 28, 1991, HPD conveyed the property to the existing occupants as a low-income cooperative with household uh, AMIs capped at, by the maintenance and utility formula outlined in Section 576, Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The building contains a total of 24 residential units with one vacancy and comprises 10, seven, I'm sorry, 10 one-bedroom apartments, 10, what is this? 10 one-bedroom apartments, right? 12 mm -hmm. two-bedroom apartments and five three-bedroom apartments. Currently, the property is in the TPT program as it meets the criteria, which includes municipal arrears more than one year old. One year old. Some of the reasons that contributed to the building's candidacy, including the passing of some of the original shareholders, uh, some who have moved out of the property, and some shareholders who refuse to pay maintenance. Therefore, with fewer resources, the HDFC was forced to was faced with operating deficiencies. Currently, the HPD, HDFC uh, has taken to rectify their situation by entering into a payment agreement with DEP arrears and, and initiating court actions. The board has also increased, increased the rents and maintenance fees, as well as require $200 <coughs> per residential unit uh, be designated annually to the building's reserve fund in order to meet the financial obligations of the building to, main to maintain solvency. 
In order to help maintain continued affordability and stability in the building, HBD is before the council seeking retroactive tax benefits dating from 2000 for a term of 40 years that will coincide with a regulatory agreement which also mandates the annual maintenance increase, increases among other requirements such as hire a third party manager. Approval of the tax exemption will facilitate removal of 490 East 181st Street HDFC from consideration as a candidate of round 10 of the third party transfer program, thus providing for long term affordability, long term home ownership by the shareholders. Sorry. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Okay. So I believe Councilmember Torres uh, supports this project. Uh, any, uh, anyone else to testify? I, I see none. Um, so I guess you are dismissed. All right, seeing none, I, uh, and I close the public hearing on this application and we will proceed to the next. Uh, okay, you testifying again? Okay. All right, um, well now we're gonna be hearing on LU 160, the 1103 Franklin Avenue tax exemption application for property located in Councilmember Gibson's district in the Bronx. HPD seeks approval of a new 40 year Article 11 tax exemption for an existing 20 unit co-op for low income families with 14 occupied and six vacant units. The prior tax exemption would be terminated. I now open the public hearing on this application and uh, I guess you don't have to, no? Okay, so you could go ahead. Okay, land use number 160 uh, consists of an exemption area containing one privately owned building located at 1103 Franklin Avenue in Bronx Council District 16. It is also a candidate for round 10 of the third party transfer program uh, and REM action number 53 for which HBD is seeking Article 11 tax benefits. This building was taken into city ownership in 1982 and it also entered into the till program. And on October 7th, 1992, uh, HPD conveyed the property to the existing occupants as a low income cooperative under section 576 of article 11 of the private housing finance law. This building contains 20 residential units and is partially occupied and comprises 10 one bedrooms and 10 two bedrooms. Uh, this building uh, is in round 10 because it meets the criteria, criteria uh, which includes some municipal arrears. And under some of the same situations, this building uh, went into the third party transfer program because some of the original occupants have passed away. Um, others moved out and others refused to pay their maintenance. Uh, this HDFC2 has taken steps to rectify their situation and they entered into a payment agreement with DP. They have uh, increased the uh, rents and maintenance fees as well as uh, require $200 per residential unit, residential units be uh, designated for the building's reserve. So in order for uh, the building to meet their financial obligations, though, they agreed to do those things. Uh, the board has uh, hired an experienced property manager and together they've developed a plan to make routine repairs and outline a capital improvement uh, program that will help maintain the building into the future. So again, in order to help maintain affordability and stability of this building, HPD is before the council seeking tax benefits for a term of 40 years that will coincide with a regulatory agreement, as well as some other items such as hire the third party manager. Approval of the tax exemption will facilitate removal of uh, 1103 Franklin Avenue uh, from consideration as a candidate for round 10 of the third party transfer program, providing for long term home ownership by the shareholders. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this application is supported by Councilmember Gibson. And, and also, I'd like to thank the Land Use Committee for the briefing. Uh, we sat for several hours on these applications. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. Uh, our next hearing is on pre-considered LU friend set apartments for property located at the 2911 West 36th Street in Councilmember Traeger's District in Brooklyn. HPD seeks a partial Article 11 tax exemption for a period of 30 years from the existing 259 unit building. The prior tax exemption would be terminated. I now open the public hearing this application and uh, we got. Uh, Carolyn Williams. Okay. 
Um, so now I ask the, um, the council to administer the oath. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. You're looking for the applicant. I affirm. We have representatives from the sponsor as well that. So we got Ellie Davidowitz and. Please raise your right hand. <laughs> Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in response to all council member questions and your testimony before the subcommittee? Uh, this pre-considered item consists of an exemption area containing one occupied multiple dwelling located at 2911 West 36th Street uh, in Brooklyn Council District 47, known as Friends at Apartments. The project is a low-income Section 8 development currently owned by an Article 5 housing redevelopment company approved for disposition by the Board of Estimate on June 23, 1977. At the time of the disposition approval, the housing company also received a property tax exemption, which is set to expire in July 2019. The building contains a mixture of unit types, including 241 one-bedroom, 17 two-bedroom, and one superintendent's unit for a total of 259 residential units, as well as four commercial units and one community facility. There is an existing housing assistance program, or HAP, contract with HUD for all the units, with the exception of the superintendent's apartment. Under the contract, household incomes do not exceed 80% of AMI, and tenants pay no more than 30% of their income toward rent. Under HPD's HUD multifamily program, the current owner will convey the project to a new entity formed under a Housing Development Fund Corporation, HGFC. Both the acquisition and rehabilitation of the property will utilize private financing. The HGFC currently has a 20-year HAP contract, which expires in 2034. The owner will also be required to enter into a new HAP contract with HUD for an additional term upon expiration of the current agreement. Eligible tenants will continue to receive Section 8 rental assistance. A moderate rehabilitation is planned for the project that includes work to the facade, common areas, lighting upgrades, installation of surveillance camera, performing electrical work, and upgrades to a portion of the bathrooms and kitchens. There are very few housing code violations and the rehab will address any that are outstanding. In order to facilitate redevelopment of the project, HPD is before the planning subcommittee seeking approval for the housing company to voluntarily dissolve their status as an Article 5, terminate their current tax exemption, and enter into a new Article 11 tax exemption for a term of 30 years, coinciding with the regulatory agreement. The cumulative value of the tax exemption is approximately $12,313,665. The net present value is approximately $5,580,453. Anybody else? No, well, seeing none. Uh, any questions? Uh, first of all, we're joined by Councilmember Mark Traeger, and we also joined uh, King is in the house by Councilman Andy King. Uh, any questions from um, members of the subcommittee on this? Councilmember Traeger. Thank you, uh, Chair. And uh, this is, after all, in my district, and this is uh, obviously uh, affordability is very important to me. And so, just uh, just to kind of summarize and crystallize a couple of points. Um, we are talking about preserving the affordability of how many entire units again? Uh, did I hear that number? There are 258 um, rental apartments. I think you have to speak into the mic. There are 258 rental apartments. Uh, is that mic on? Because it has to record, I'm sorry. It, it looks like it is. Yeah, the red light is on. Oh, it's on, okay. Yeah. I, uh, so 258 rental apartments. And this, this action uh, will preserve affordability for, for what length of time? 30 years. 30 years. And can you just, again, quickly summarize uh, what uh, improvements will be made to the building as well? Sure. Um, there's approximately going to be $4 million worth of improvements. Those improvements are going to include the facade, um, roofing, lighting, surveillance cameras, a portion of the bathrooms and kitchens will be renovated, um, the um, AC sleeves um, as well, and electrical upgrades, including um, some safety issues throughout the building. And with, with those improvements, will there be any, uh, will there be any types of requests for an MCI increase? No. 
No. So these the, the folks will continue to pay what they're paying. This is preserving affordability of these units for 30 years. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Traeger. Uh, any members of the public who wish to testify? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will now uh, continue on LUs 149 and 150, the 1019, 1029 Fulton Street application for properties in Council Member Combos District in Brooklyn. Uh, the New York City Department of Housing Preservation Development of Fulton Star LLC seek, de seek designation of an Urban Development Action Area Project, UDA UDAAP, project approval, and disposition approval of city-owned property at 1027 and 1029 Fulton Street and zoning special permit to waive required off-street parking at 1021, 1029 Fulton Street. These proposed actions would facilitate the development of an 80 eight-story building with approximately 50 residential units and 6,100 square feet of ground floor commercial retail space to be constructed on the, dis on the disposition area and six <laughs> adjacent <laughs> privately owned lots. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application. I'd like to call, oh, wow. Uh, Lin Zhang, we have Lin Zhang? Okay, and uh, we got him. Genevieve Michael. Okay. Um, okay, I will now uh, ask the council um, to uh, sway the applicants. Please raise your right hand. Do you, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and in answer all our subcommittee questions? Yes. You may proceed. Uh, land use numbers 149 and 150 are related to uniform land use review procedure actions that pertain to the development of a mixed use project known as 1019 Fulton Street in Brooklyn Council District 35. The city is seeking approval of urban development action area project designation, approval of the proposed project and disposition of two city owned vacant lots located at 1027 and 1029 Fulton Streets, block 1991, lots two and three, as well as a special permit. Land use number 149 consists of the proposed development of 1019 Fulton Street under HPD's Voluntary Inclusionary Housing Program. Under program guidelines, the sponsor proposes to construct an eight-story residential building containing 15 dwelling units and 6,094 square feet of ground floor retail space. The project area is made up of seven privately owned properties located at block 1991, lots 145, 16 and 106 as well as the city's lots which are lots two and three while lots two and three had previously received disposition approval by the city planning commission in the 1990s given their small size and configuration no appropriate affordable housing program existed at the time therefore the lots remain undeveloped and under the city's ownership currently the sponsor who owns the adjacent private sites submitted a proposal to HPD for consideration that would incorporate the city owned sites with the private sites in order to create an assemblage of nine sites uh, to develop the 1019 Fulton Street project as part of LU number 149 the newly constructed building will be mixed youth with a variety of unit types including 12 studios 24 one bedrooms and 14 two bedroom apartments 30% of the units, approximately 15 apartments, would be permanently affordable to individuals and households earning a mix of incomes and would be privately financed. We are still finalizing exact AMIs, but we are targeting 100 AMI and below. Uh, the remaining units, approximately 34, would be rented at market rate. Proposed residential amenities include laundry rooms on each residential floor, a recreation room in the cellar, and outdoor patio space on the roofs. Additionally, there will be 25 bicycle spaces for residents in the cellar. The retail space is anticipated to be 6,094 square feet. It will be designed to be flexible so it can accommodate smaller retailers. The developer is working with Fulton Alliance Business and the council member's office to identify local retailers that could potentially rent the spaces. In order to facilitate development of the project, HPD also requests approval of land use number 150. This action seeks approval of a special permit to waive required accessory off-street parking spaces for dwelling units in a mixed-use project within a transit zone that includes at least 20% of all dwelling units in a development as income-restricted residential apartments. 
The amendment will affect the project area, which, in which includes the private sites, Block 1991, Lot 1, 7, 16, and 106, as well as the city-owned properties, which are Lots 2 and 3. The 1019 Fulton Street is an opportunity to maximize the number of affordable units on the site and contribute to the commercial corridor while minimizing valuable city resources. Therefore, HPD is seeking approval for land use numbers 149 and 150. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions? I do have um, a statement, and if a question comes out of it, we'll just have a dialogue. Right. So the council member who's responsible for this area is Council Member Combo, mm -hmm. and she has expressed her concerns, even though we're still at the table trying to figure out what makes sense. Yep. Uh, Any time that a private partnership we want to make sure that, see, Lord is speaking to us all right now. <laughs> get it right. Get it right. He's telling us to get it right. Okay? So, but I'm, I'm just asking the city, and um, as we make these deals, that making sure that the community that's going to be surrounding this area benefits from any development. I mean, the sale of a dollar is it's a good thing to inspire developers to build in our community, but we want to make sure that the community is profiting it too and not developers walk away. I've seen it too many times. You know, we go through the EULA, have to go through the EULA process and people try to figure out their own agendas as opposed to the neighborhood, not the community. I'm talking about the neighborhood because the community can, is an agenda in the neighborhood of the people who live in the geographical area. So I'm asking you as you continue to negotiate, negotiate in good faith, but at the end of the day, we don't want to be struck down by lightning. He already warned us, <laughs> all right, that we do right by this neighborhood making sure that whatever agreements that are being made on the best interest of our council member combo and that district is done in good faith. All right, I thank you. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, council member King. Um, okay, so I just wanna read a, uh, um, a statement from council member combos. Uh, she could not be here today. She's out of town. Um, so this proposal calls for the sale of approximately 2,300 square feet of city-owned property for one dollar to the developer Fulton Star LLC to be combined with the surrounding properties in order to, to facilitate the development of an eight-story building with ground floor commercial space and 50 apartments, 15 of which would be affordable at 70, 80, and 120 AMI. Throughout the review process, Committee Board 2, the Brooklyn Borough President, and some members of the City Planning Commission have all raised concerns about the proposed affordability of the pu and public benefits of this project. I share these concerns and have consistently, consistently advocated throughout my term as council member for the, for the 35th District that sale of lease of public land to private developers should always come with, with significant public benefits. The proposal before us today does not have enough deeply affordable units for the families who are in the greatest need of affordable housing. I also believe that this project offers a promising opportunity to secure commercial space for local businesses who are under increasing pressure from gentrification and development in our community. As we continue the council review of this project, I look forward to further conversations with HPD and the developer to secure a more inclusive development. Uh, she has a uh, question including commercial space that is a, a pro, a appropriately sized and priced for local businesses in a priority of ma uh, majority leader combo. What is your current proposal to achieve this goal and how can we achieve greater affordability and long-term security for small businesses? Um, Don't fight over the question. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the developer and, and, and Jackie is here representing the project sponsor. Um, they've been in discussion with the local council member on this very matter. Um, so I think that discussion is still ongoing. Okay, so you, you're dismissed and uh, let's call up the next panel to answer that question. Oh, oh, um, I, I think we have, uh, we have the developer on the next panel. Okay, great. great. All right. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Unless you want to stay. I mean, you can stay all day. Stay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to call up uh, Tom. Is there Tom here? He's actually just going to be available for questions. Is that okay? Or? Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm only going to read first things because it's very hard to read this uh, thing. Uh, Jacqueline? Let's hope there's only one Jacqueline in the room. Jacqueline? Okay. Ed? Ed Brown? Philip Kellogg? Uh, 
I would like to uh, ask counsel to swear in the applicants. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but your truth in your answer to council member questions and in all your testimony before the subcommittee? Yeah, you may proceed. Okay, so my name is Jacqueline Scarinci of Ackerman LLP on behalf of the co-applicant here. HPD is obviously the co-applicant and also Fulton Star is the, is the private developer who will be developing the proposed project um, that you see before you right now uh, located at 1019 Fulton Street. I will give a quick overview because I think Genevieve covered a lot of um, what the project is about and then I'll turn it over to uh, Ed Brown, who's who's working um, with the developer on local hiring um, to ensure that we have quality construction jobs and um, long-term jobs within the community, and then also um, joined by Phil Kellogg of the Fulton Business Alliance, who uh, the owner has been working with over the past five years on ensuring that the retail space, since this project is part of the Fulton Business District, uh, to ensure that there is quality retail space that also meets the needs of the community. Um, and, and that's something that we are working very strongly with, um, with Council Member Combo to ensure that the local businesses that she's identified as being displaced um, would have a, a, new, a new location uh, at this site. And also to ensure that, that this Fulton business district corridor. Um, this site uh, actually has been vacant for the past 20 years. And I'm just gonna show you briefly, um, because there were some questions about the public benefit of this project. Uh, just to, I'm just gonna go quickly through these, just to show you what the site is. Um, so the city disposition only makes up 20% of this development site. It's, it's otherwise it's the, the remaining 80% is privately owned land. The developer is not asking for any subsidy here with the exception of the city is disposing of this 2300 square foot lot. Um, so I know that there is concern about the public benefit, but here these sites would likely remain vacant if the developer were not to redevelopment, redevelop this pro to develop this project and also with the city, city land can provide 15 permanently affordable housing units. As of right, no affordable housing here would have to be provided. It's already an R7A zoning district. And I just have some background on, on how the, the, the developer's been working with the city over the past five years to put together this assemblage um, and, and also to ensure that the maximum public benefit is reached by this project. As you can see, it's, 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 a, it's a vacant area along Fulton, Fulton Street right now. And we will have a new eight-story development, as Genevieve stated before, with 50 residential units a full ground floor retail space and um, 15 permanently affordable housing units. And I'm gonna now turn it over to Ed to speak about the developers um, partnership in, in working on local hiring. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Ed Brown, and I'm the president of Team Brown Consulting. And just to give you a brief, brief background on projects we work, worked on, on before that you're familiar with, um, the Cabinet Library project, which we're on right now. Um, we worked briefly on City Point. Um, we worked on Dock Street with two trees, Bam South with two trees, Slate Property Group 325 Lafayette, one Flatbush Avenue, and several other with BFC partners as well. Um, we were brought on board to um, assure that um, local residents get, get an opportunity to um, work on this particular project. I'm born and raised in that district and I'm a former tenant leader um, with the Ingersoll Houses. And when the, when the redevelopment took place in Ingersoll, we saw a need 
to create an entity to make sure that residents get employed when these project, projects take place. So based on what our council member King said, um, that's our mission and we do it well. Um, some developers we won't work with because trying to get them to comply is like pulling teeth. And um, we feel this project um, is a good project for the community and um, we already have a database, plus we send people out and find people within a certain radius of the project and we find people with skills and without skills and if they don't have skills, we provide OSHA training and um, scaffolding uh, certification and flagging certification and we basically help the developer um, meet his quota with the jobs. And um, also as it relates to um, the local businesses, because I'm born and raised in the community, I, I know most of the businesses in the community. So we're gonna do the footwork and go out and find businesses that wanna stay in the community, primarily businesses of color, and, and see if we can get them to move into a, a new space at a reasonable rent where they could um, survive gentrification. That's it, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Philip Kellogg and I'm executive director of the Fulton Area Business Alliance, which is a nonprofit business improvement district along Fulton Street's corridor in Fort Greene and Clinton Hill. We represent over 400 businesses and uh, property owners along Fulton Street. A top economic development goal of our organization has been the transformation of these vacant city-owned lots into a mixed-use development that includes ground floor commercial uses. For the city to be able to leverage these two small slivers of vacant lots to generate affordable housing well beyond what is possible on the city-owned lots two and three alone, plus adding ground floor commercial activity along Fulton Street all the way to the corner of Downing would be a major win and we support this ULURP application. A devastating outcome would be the as of right option. If the developer went ahead and built the building on the adjacent property that they already own, where the community would end up with market rate condos and no affordable housing, plus no ground floor commercial activity and just a dead zone along Fulton Street. In the end, we'd be left with those two small city owned lots and those are certain to be re remain vacant for generations to come. FAB supports the request in the ULURP application to waive the requirement for off-street parking. One of the great things about Fulton Street in this section is how well served it is by mass transit and accommodating off-street parking in this project would decimate the possibilities for ground floor commercial activity. Um, and ground floor commercial use is essential to this section of the Fulton Street commercial corridor, in particular between Grand and Franklin. In conversations and public meetings, the developer has been supportive of FAB's vision for the ground floor space to be activated in a way that benefits the community. FAB's goals include having a variety of small businesses that will serve the community instead of one large chain or a single bank or a big box store that dominates the entire block. FAB has also requested that space be made available for local businesses and or nonprofit cultural and arts organizations at below market rates, rents. We are very encouraged that the developer, and this doesn't happen always, has agreed to put many of these stipulations that FAB has asked for in writing. FAB enthusiastically supports this ULURP application, and we look forward to seeing the project realized. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have a question. How, um, as chair of the Veterans Committee, um, I'd just like to, uh, to add maybe um, when you hire uh, people for projects, uh, you said you represent over 400 um, building owners and uh, business owners. Um, so if you could just consider hiring some veterans, um, just so I want to, want to make that uh, a request. Um, we have a question here from Council Member Andy Kink. Thank you for looking out for the Veterans Council member. My dad was a veteran. I know a couple of people come back from serving the, our great country only to find themselves on soup lines, can't get health insurance, no one wants to hire them, but we will put them on a battlefield. Don't understand the logic of this country when it comes to taking care of the men and women who keep protect our freedoms, but, but that's a bigger conversation. Uh, but I want to ask you all a question. Now this is 1119 Fulton Star LLC, and you're representing them, correct? Correct. So my question to you is, and this is gonna go in conjunction with what my brother said here. Now, while you're from the neighborhood and you, you're there to protect and make sure local uh, residents get opportunities to work on this site, I'd like to know from you, um, the council member and the community board and the borough has expressed concerns about affordability. 
So we know that we can always provide jobs if the right people have the skills to get the jobs and according to him, they're gonna train people to get those jobs. Someone's trained to get this job, earns a decent living. The affordability question comes in, how does someone who's from the neighborhood who's been there forever, and I don't even like, you know, when we say we gotta fight our gentrification, gentrification is not a wonderful thing, it's not a great thing, and we throw it around on, on, on a subtle tent like it's something we're supposed to accept. If someone has lived in a neighborhood and has endured the neighborhood through his good times and some of his struggling times, then we start to rebuild it for the next set of people who don't look like the people who, who survived the neighborhood. It's not a wonderful thing to be proud of. Gentrification is not a wonderful thing to be proud of. So I'm asking you, how, do we, how can you ensure this community, this neighborhood, that once this building, if it's to get erected, that the person who's worked building this building who lived around the corner can access to live in this building? Or those who are struggling with the rates that you're saying breaking down AMIs for people to live in this building, how can you assure that the council member and all these concerns will be addressed and let alone making sure that the, sm the, the small local black business that's in the neighborhood can guarantee that you're gonna put them in a rent that they can afford. Now hopefully they can afford it. If you want them in there, you gotta give them something that, that they can continue to run their business because if they can't, then here goes that gentrification word again that you start bringing people inside saying, well, they couldn't afford the rent. That's why we had to bring these other people out. So what is your guarantee? What is gonna be your energy to make sure these things don't happen? Okay, so I, you're asking two questions, one about affordability of housing and then two about affordability for small businesses within the community. So the first question is um, the units that, the 15 units that will be permanently affordable are going to be subject to HPD and, and HPD's guidelines and marketing process. There will be a 50% community board preference for those units um, a, as the guidelines currently set forth. So that means that when there is the housing lottery for those 15 units, there is a preference given to, um, to members of community board two living within, within the area that meet the, the affordability levels for the project. So that would ensure that this preference is given right off the bat. In addition to that, the developer has partnered with Impact Brooklyn, which is a local not-for-profit that will do outreach to the community to make sure that they understand, they do a financial literacy campaign and they also um, ensure that the community is aware of these housing opportunities because a lot of times, um, that from my experience, I've seen that people just don't even know that that these affordable housing opportunities exist within the community. Um, so that's, the developer has partnered with this lo local nonprofit to ensure that, that those units will, not only on making sure that they go to the community, but also making sure that they're educated on, on the availability of these units. And it's restricted by a regulatory agreement. So, the, the develop, so we can't decide that we, we don't wanna eventually provide these at affordability levels, they will be restricted permanently by, by legal documents. Um, I wanna thank you for your efforts to answer the questions. Um, he lives in the neighborhood. You have a responsibility to make sure that you protect your neighborhood. This is a good looking building. Can it will bring an opportunity here, but if the residents who don't live around it, I've seen, H I've seen HPD in work. You put together agreement, you say these are the rules, and then you open up and change the rules, or there's something that somebody missed, and then the people who are around the corner who were knocking on the door can't get in that building. Just saying, be mindful. If you're gonna make an agreement, stick to it, because it's gonna be hard pressed. Plus, whatever, whatever council member combo is looking to get, we're asking you to make sure that it gets accomplished, because it'll be hard pressed for us all. To, we will stand with her in any efforts to make sure this, this building and this project is what she wants to see happen. I want to make a state, statement in reference to that. Um, Impact Brooklyn, I have some experience working with them on other projects. And the key, what I found out is e even if people have the income for these apartments, the key is, as she mentioned, to jump, jump out ahead of the game and, and provide the financial literacy workshops and provide the affordable housing application process um, um, instruction and we've done that at um, one of the local schools and we had, you know, we had room for like, we expected about 30 people to come out to get the information and like more than 80 people came out to this um, workshop that we had. 
So I think the first thing, and we're also working on that as well, is to educate the community in reference to um, you know um, um, financial literacy and, and the things necessary to take an opportunity like this as they pop up. So I'm gonna end with this. I have the same similar situation in my district with a building and the same things offer finance. I just like to know, are we offering financial literacy to every community that every time we erect a building? Because what I'm hearing from time to time is how do we weed out people we don't want to recreate a scenario saying that you may not know how to manage or get into a building. If I have the income to get into a building and I should be and I have access to it, then no one should give other barriers and have other criteria to say, well, you're not prepared or ready, but I'm gonna bring these people in because they're prepared and ready. They don't make the if someone's making seventy thousand dollars on this side, same person making seventy thousand dollars, but I live around the corner. Yeah, when you build it, you should be building it for that person who's right around the corner who's trying to get out of mom's and pop's house, not someone who lives in another borough and bringing them in and saying, ah, they qualify because they were fiscally responsible and they should be able to get in the building. That's the point I'm saying, because I don't want us to be coming in the land use process and then I think the neighborhood that this house is being built gets gentr gentr and I say gentrification is not a great thing. I don't want that to happen here and that's why we're asking these hard questions because at the end of the day, whatever Councilman McCombo is fighting for, we're gonna stand with it, whether that's a yes or a no. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilmember King. Uh, we've been all told to join by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson and uh, Councilmember Ruben Diaz, uh, Senior. Um, any other, qu any questions? No? Okay, um, I don't see anyone else to testify, no? Uh, any other members of the public to wish to testify? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application and it will be laid over. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now pause our hearings uh, to take a vote on uh, 158, 159, 160, uh, and uh, friend said apartments, um, and 161. Uh, we will be voting on, two pro on, uh, voting on two projects that we will not be holding hearings on today because they are amendments to previously approved applications which were subject to prior hearings. These amendments are necessary to correct typographical or similar errors. The first is LU-158, the N NHP Hope Homes Cluster Amendment for property in Council Member Perkins and Ayala's district. The exemption area was identified as one property comprised of Block 1750, Lots 57 and 58. The correction is to, ident to identify each property separately as Block 1750, Lot 57, and Block 1750, Lot 58. The second is LU 161, the Small Homes Rehab, NYCHA SQVH Cluster 2 Amendment for Property and Council Member Adams District. In this case, part of the project area was identified as 147-06 Sutter Place. The correction is to identify it as 147-06 Sutter, Sutter Avenue. Uh, I now call for a vote to approve LUs 158, 159, 160, 161, and pre-considered LU friends at apartments, all of which have the support of the local council members. Uh, council, please call the roll. Gibson. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote on the record. Um, I want permission to- granted. Thank you. I want to speak in favor of LU uh, 160, 1103 Franklin Avenue, uh, who has uh, applied to HPD for a 40-year tax exemption, Article 11, and I am grateful for the shareholders um, and the co-op residents of 1103 Franklin uh, in my district in the Morrisania community because they've faced a number of challenges um, with maintaining their HDFC status and through this tax exemption, they're going to remain affordable for the next 40 years for these families as well as future families. So I wanna recognize 1103 Franklin Avenue and thank HPD and the HDFC Coalition who did a tremendous amount of work to get them uh, back on good ground so they can maintain their status. So I ask my colleagues Colleagues on the committee to please vote in the affirmative, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Deutsch. Aye on all. King. Aye on all. Diaz. By a vote of four in the affirmative and zero in the negative with zero abstentions, the items are recommended to the full land use committee. Thank you very much. Uh, gracias. Um, our next uh, hearing will be LU 157, uh, the 286 one West 151st uh, Street tax exemption application for property in Council Member Perkins District in Manhattan. This application is for the termination of the prior exemption for this fully occupied 18 unit residential co op for the low income households. A new Article 11 tax exemption is proposed. 
I now open the public hearing this application. Um, Lacey Tauber, Malcolm Morris, and Artie Pearson. Okay, wow, we see you again. Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay, um, so we're not going to swear you in again, okay. unless you really want. Right. No. Okay. Land use number 157 consists, consists of an exemption area containing one privately owned building located at 286 West 151st Street in Manhattan Council District 9. This property, too, is a candidate for round 10 of the third party transfer program in room action number 51, for which HPD is seeking Article 11 tax benefits. The building was taken into city ownership in 1978 and subsequently entered into the TIL program. On June 27th of 2002, HPD conveyed the property to the existing occupants as a low income cooperative with households AMIs capped by the maintenance and utility formula outlined in, 570, in Section 576. Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The building contains a total of 18 residential units. It is fully occupied and comprises 11 one-bedroom, two two-bedroom, and five three-bedroom apartments. Apparently, I'm sorry, currently the properties in TPT as it meets the uh, criteria, which includes municipal arrears more than a year old. Some of the reasons that contributed to the building's candidacy include the passing of original shareholders, some who've moved out of the property, and some shareholders who refuse to pay maintenance. Therefore, with fewer re uh, resources, the HCFC was faced with operating deficiencies. After realizing they were in danger of foreclosure, the shareholders worked out a plan to help save their building. They have recently entered into a payment pl program, a payment plan with uh, D uh, DEP, and in October 2016, the board increased the rent and maintenance fees in order to meet the uh, financial obligations of the building to maintain solvency. Uh, the HDFC will enter into a voluntary repair agreement to address outstanding housing code violations and any needed repairs. So in an effort to save uh, this building and maintain affordability and stability, HBD is before the council seeking tax benefits for a period of 40 years that will coincide with a regulatory agreement which also mandates annual maintenance increases among other requirements, such as I, a third party property manager. Approval of the tax exemption will facilitate the removal of 286, what, 236? 286 West 151st Street uh, from consideration as a candidate for uh, round 10 of TPT uh, so that the building can provide long term home ownership for the shareholders. That's it. Uh, thank you. Any members of the public wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application, and it will be laid over. Uh, our next public hearing will be on LU 156, Bolton Commons, for property located at Fill In in, in Councilmember Perkins District, Manhattan. HPD seeks an approval of an or urban development action uh, area project, UDAAP designation pro uh, project approval and disposition approval for Block 1932, Lots 57 and 107. Uh, these actions will facilitate the development of a new mixed-use seven-story building with 36 affordable housing units and commercial and community facility space. Uh, and I now open the public hearing. Uh, we have Kenneth, Ken Kenneth Morrison, Kevin Paris, and Lacey Talbot. Uh, council, uh, I'd like to ask the council to swear in the applicants. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and answer to all council member questions? Yes. yes. Okay. You may begin. Thanks. Uh, LU number 156 consists of the proposed disposition of three city owned sites located at 263 to 267 West 126th Street in Council District 9, known as Balton Commons. In 2008, um, HPD completed a ULERP application to approve the disposition of city-owned sites for the expansion of an existing commercial facility in the borough of Manhattan. Subsequent to these actions, HPD did not continue with the disposition of these sites. Therefore, to facilitate the intended project, the ULERP actions before the City Council involve uh, an Urban Development Action Area Project, or UDAP, designation and project approval and disposition for the 
the proposed development of Balton Commons under HPD's Neighborhood Construction Program, or MCP. The project site contains a community garden known as Mandela Garden, which was licensed as an interim garden in late 2014. In 2015, HPD informed the gardeners that the site was moving forward as an affordable housing project. Over the course of the last few years, HPD and the Parks Department have made several attempts to engage the cooperation of the gardeners in an effort to provide relocation assistance that included alternate sites upon which to establish a new garden. While eight alternate sites were offered, none were accepted. In 2015, HPD issued a request for qualifications geared toward certified MWBE organizations that would be given the opportunity to submit a proposal to develop the lots as low-income rental housing. On January 13, 2017, the development team was selected to develop the Balton Commons site under the NCP term sheet, as I mentioned. The proposal includes, includes the construction of a seven-story mixed-use building containing approximately 37 apartments, including a superintendent's unit, as well as 6,000 square feet of commercial space and 1,400 square feet of community facility space. Once completed, the new building will be comprised of 11 studios, 12 one-bedroom, and three three-bedroom units, plus one for a superintendent. Tar targeted incomes will range from 30 to 100 percent of AMI, approximately $93,900 for a family of three, with rental tiers at 27, 57, and 90 percent of AMI, which is about $367 for a studio to $2,367 for a three-bedroom. Amenities for the building include a dishwasher and all residential units, as well as a gym and outdoor activity space, laundry per floor, and bicycle parking spaces. The sponsor has partnered with Silicon Harlem, a for-profit organization that focuses on technology, who will operate from the commercial space. The community facility space will be utilized by Silicon Harlem's nonprofit arm, offering educational and work, uh, workspace to local groups. Additionally, the retail space is anticipated to be utilized by a coffee shop. In order to facilitate development of the Balton Commons project, HPD is before the council seeking approval of land use item number 156. And uh, we have a representative from the development team who can take you through a brief presentation. Huh? If, if you're ready, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, good, good afternoon. Kenneth Morrison, principal of Lamore Realty Corporation, one of the MBWE partners that was awarded the site. Right, okay. Yeah, um, you're not testifying? You have not, no, no comments, right? Okay, um, this project is supported by the you council member. The okay, you don't have to. It's supported by the council member. And um, uh, are there any uh, questions, any members of the public that wish to testify? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application and it will be laid over. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank the council and land use staff for preparing today's hearing, the members of the public, and my colleagues for attending. This meeting is hereby adjourned.